Okay, and we're going to move on to our next talk, um, which is by Claudia Comito uh, from, I don't know if I can get this pronunciation right, uh, <laughs> Eulish? Eulish. Oh, not so bad. Uh, Supercomputing Center, and she will be talking about analyzing scientific big data with heat, which is the Helmholtz Analytics Toolkit. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for the organization. It's uh, pretty amazing here. Uh, it's, it's also quite exciting for me to be at, at an astronomy conference two years after leaving astronomy, but Let's get started. Um, my background is, is in uh, uh, sub-millimeter far infrared spectroscopy. I worked a lot on Herschel uh, Hi-Fi data. And two years ago, I moved to the Eulish Supercomputing Center um, to join a, a, a pretty interdisciplinary project on uh, uh, scientific big data analytics. So I'll say a couple words on this uh, uh, group of uh, completely heterogeneous uh, fields of science. It's a Helmholtz analytics uh, framework. Um, it's uh, basically eight institutes within the Helmholtz Association, which is the largest research organization in, uh, um, in Germany. Uh, and uh, they come from different fields in applied uh, life or life sciences. Um, they uh, realize they have, uh, they all have uh, one uh, very common and very massive problem, which is they have very massive uh, data sets, very massive models. Um, they all need uh, uh, high performance computing and supercomputers for, uh, uh, for to do their science. They are all in the process or in, uh, putting in significant, significant effort uh, into porting their you know, home, uh, this, their special uh, or specialized packages, their homegrown packages to uh, HPC applications. They also discovered they are pretty much interested in very similar methods, like, of course, dimensionality reduction, um, um, singular value decomposition, uh, PCA, machine learning, neural networks. And so these uh, several groups that uh, are, go from atmospheric physics to earth uh, system modeling to neuroscience to virtual aircraft simulations, simulations to, to structural biology got together to uh, produce a library that is supposed to make it easier for scientists to um, move, port their, their uh, code to parallel programming or to HPC. Um, High performance computing applications. So that's where, ah, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's where uh, uh, heat gets in. Um, that's what we are working on as developers. So I think I'm going to skip this slide because if we, if somebody has this question, and I'm sure they do, <laughs> we can uh, we can uh, talk about it at the end. Um, heat is a Python library. Um, that uh, 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 basically wants to uh, mimic NumPy. Um, uh, we, we, you can imagine it as sort of uh, uh, NumPy running in parallel without you having to do many changes to your code. So uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the implementation, but uh, we kind of loosely follow the bug synchronous parallel uh, model um, with some differences. So if you uh, assume you, you're running your uh, code, your calculations on four cores, for example, and uh, there would be rank zero, one, two, three in, in parallel computing speak, um, your data are already distributed on these four cores, the uh, computation start, you have a synchronization, and then at some point within the computation, uh, some one process needs to uh, provide data to a different process. Uh, then what happens within heat is that once the data are received, they are immediately available for computation, um, which would not be the case in the standard bug synchronous parallel model. They would only be available for computation at the uh, you know uh, cumulative or bulk synchronization event. Um, which in heat happens only if you have well at the beginning and at the end, and if you have uh, 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 collective codes. So uh, the data, I was, I've been talking about the data, but the data process local data objects for heat are uh, PyTorch tensors and uh, communication among processes is via uh, MPI and MPI for Py. 
Okay, let's get on. So as I just mentioned, right, process local data objects are uh, PyTorch tensors for us, but the uh, heat data object is the DND array or distributed n-dimensional array. Um, you can imagine it as a global MPI-aware wrapper around the process local PyTorch tensors and the way you uh, distribute your data at you distribute data at the moment of loading them is by um, defining a DND array by uh, specifying the split attribute like this. So this is pretty much uh, the same as defining a, a, a NumPy array, um, assuming that my data here is either a NumPy array or a torch tensor, you can easily wrap them, wrap that data into a, a heat array and distribute it across cores uh, thanks to the split attribute, which basically tells you that the data will be distributed um, along the uh, first dimension. Uh, there's a um, figure to uh, visualize it better. If in this case, you have a 60 element uh, cube of shape five times four times three, um, and you wrap it into a, a heat DND array, with split zero, it means that in this case, sorry, we have three processes instead of four, um, that your data will, will be distributed along the uh, zero axis. So, and they will be distributed as evenly as possible. So you will have the first two uh, items, let's say of the first dimension uh, uh, on process zero and the, the other two on process one and the last one on process two. Of course, you can also split along uh, uh, the other dimensions of your uh, of your data. You can also set split to none or not set it at all. Be careful because that means that your data will be copied on every process, the entirety of your data. Um, this is from our uh, paper, uh, Goetz et al. 2020, that's just been accepted at the IEEE uh, Big Data. So we also have uh, parallel I.O. of course, uh, HDF5 and let's see DF4. You can also load a huge uh, CSV file if you want uh, and distribute it immediately. Um, if somebody wants to implement uh, load fits for us, you're, <laughs> please go ahead. Um, uh, the main thing I want to stress here is that the parallelization of all operations within heat is transparent, transparent in the uh, computer science meaning of the term, which is it's hidden. You as a users don't need to deal with it. You, you, you can know everything about it, of course, if you want to, but you don't really need to worry about communication in the background. Um, yes, so this is what it looks like in, in pseudo, a heat operation would look like in pseudocode, let's say, uh, in the background. So it will check if the setup is multi-core and then uh, the, the, the array is uh, distributed across cores, then uh, whatever on-process computation needs to be done will be carried out by uh, PyTorch functions, which means heat is yes, a pure Python library, but it uses PyTorch as a compute engine, so it's fast. Um, and then the inter-process communication of the result will be via MPI uh, that's taken care of in the background. Otherwise, if the setup is single core, just run the, the, the uh, calculations via PyTorch and return the result as a DND array. From the user side, you don't see any of this. You just, uh, you know, define your array as this is a, a, a random, a, a, a big matrix, matrix with the random numbers, and, uh, and you want to calculate the, the standard deviation on it. it should be one. Um, you 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 don't need to know at the moment of writing this code whether you are going to run it on a single core or on multi cores or on GPUs or whatever. Uh, the important thing is that you set the split attribute because that will enable data parallelism. And if you don't set it, as I said, your data will be copied on all the processes. Um, the uh, the, the uh, par whether it's then run in parallel or not depends on how you call your uh, uh, your code. So, okay, um, I wanted to show you an example of that. We have a lot of uh, 
basic NumPy operations or basic operations uh, within HEAT. We also have uh, um, quite a bit of uh, uh, high level algorithms or machine learning algorithms, for example, clustering, classification, uh, regression, and so on. Uh, I want to show you k-means. Um, for the high level algorithms, we stick to the scikit-learn API. So uh, this is basically absolutely similar to what you're used to if you if you run k-means or or, uh, or uh, machine learning algorithms on uh, on scikit-learn. Again, the only difference is define the split algorithm, uh, set the split attributes when uh, defining your data. Okay, I don't think I have time to get into details. If I have time, I have two extra slides, but um, the, the main thing is that we do put a lot of focus on the uh, high performance computing implementation in the background. So HEAT is not distributing the data and then running NumPy functions on them. HEAT is running functions that look like NumPy, I mean, that can be called with the same NumPy API, but they are implemented um, within HEAT to, uh, to take advantage of the uh, HPC infrastructure, whatever infrastructure you have available. So there, there is a lot of attention to the communication and to, to memory details and the results. We, we have our, uh, our benchmark, benchmarks on our uh, GitHub repository. And we found that we have a pretty significant speed up with respect to um, Dask and uh, Dask in combination with uh, QPy if you want to run on uh, GPUs as well. Uh, please check out our paper that should be on our uh, uh, repository. The link of the updated paper should be in the repository tomorrow. So when I uh, left. Thanks. Maybe I would have had time for the other slides, so I'll go, I'll go back. <laughs> I'll go back uh, afterwards. So um, Outlook, um, we've come a long way. We've been working on this for two years, but it's still an early phase library, uh, currently at version 0.5. And uh, there's a lot of uh, ongoing um, work on, uh, for example, the main project right now is a, a data parallel neural networks that should be released by the end of this year or, or early next year. Um, parallel uh, automatic differentiation is a, is a big thing that we are working on as well. Some plotting, linear algebra, as I said, uh, uh, or uh, maybe I didn't, uh, a student of mine is working on uh, um, SVD, uh, parallel SVD. Um, if you do decide to try HEAT, we'll be happy. We are uh, absolutely sure you will find that the, you're missing some things, some tools that you need, some algorithms or some uh, NumPy functions uh, that you usually use and they're not available in HEAT. Please let us know. We would be delighted to, uh, to help you there or uh, uh, to figure out what's not working for you. Um, if you would like to contribute, we will be even more delighted. So please get in touch with me uh, on uh, Discord if it's uh, easy for you. We try to stick to software development best practices as much as we can. And I mentioned this because we also have uh, uh, many students uh, working with us on the projects uh, on the project. And we, I, I find it's really a great thing for them to get exposed so early, including undergrads to uh, unit tests and uh, uh, CI and so on. Um, and so if you think you, you or uh, some students you're tutoring uh, might, be, uh, uh, might uh, be willing or might be interested or might be, you know, uh, 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 willing to, uh, to do a side project with us, please let us know. We will be delighted. We are still an academic institution, so. Um, that's it for now. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, if you have questions, we have a little bit of time. Um, so please put them in the Q&A or else in Discord. Um, so Anastasia asks, um, seems to be kind of related to something we touched upon, how difficult would it be to integrate FITS into HEAT? <laughs> To be honest, I haven't worked on any astronomy uh, at all. And so I don't know, <laughs> but 
<laughs> but uh, I'm certainly willing to um, look into this. All right. Um, so at the beginning of your of your slide deck, you um, you had mentioned all of the different uh, fields that that you were trying to um, help address issues with. I, do you uh, do you have people from all of those different fields working with you, or did you just kind of survey them, or you just know that there's these general problems out there that you wanted to address? Yeah. So the the um, framework is organized uh, like this. There is a work package one that's actually the domain scientists, as we call them, and uh, we are in touch with them uh, regularly about uh, what their needs and uh, and uh, uh, yeah, what we need he to do. Um, and they are the people who are working on the biology data, on the neuroscience data, on the uh, virtual aircraft simulation data, and so on. And then we are the developers. Um, yes, and so so we are very much in touch with them, but uh, we of course also uh, had to schedule our work because we started pretty much from zero. We couldn't start with the neural networks from day one. <laughs> okay, um, another question. Uh, how does heat compare to desk? Yes, so I'm glad you ask because uh, that's a big part of our paper actually and if i may i will go i'm going to show you a slide may i yes please uh, hang on uh, let's see oh yeah i forgot the thank you slide well let me show this um okay so we have, uh, you can check the benchmarks and you can check the paper. We have uh, uh, several benchmarks there. I, I just wanted to show this one. Um, um, so we have weak scaling and strong scaling. Uh, let me see. So this was a, a, a benchmark on pairwise Euclidean distances on the SUSI dataset. It's a huge dataset, 5 million entries and 18 features. Uh, the hardware is here. I'm not going to go through that. Uh, you can see this is the runtime. You can see the heat with GPU is almost, well, it's much faster than dusk with GPU. We have two um, types of uh, tests with dusk. Um, and one is auto and the other one is tuned that depends on the chunking. So auto is with the, with automatic chunk, chunking and tuned is uh, when we manipulated, let's say the chunking in order to uh, basically fit better the way that heat uh, distributes the data or chunks the data, if you will. Right, so in, and there, there isn't much difference there. You can see in both the, the CPU and the uh, GPU case, the heat is much faster. 10 times faster, up to 100 times faster, or even more in the GPU case. So these are the weak scaling tests. That means that the wor uh, workload is kept constant on each, M on each process, on each MPI process. Um, so you can see there is room for improvement for, for heat as well, because this should be sort of a flat line. Um, so you can see that the runtime increases, uh, even going up, going uh, yeah, it increases when it should be flat, basically. But um, yes, that happens. It happens for dusk as well. I also have the strong scaling slide here. Uh, the unit is uh, speed up uh, compared to uh, a single node NumPy run. And strong scaling is when the the workload is kept constant on the system. So the workload on each node, as, as you increase the nodes, the workload on each node decreases. Um, yes, even in this case, uh, we, we do see that uh, heat is much faster, quite a bit faster than dusk. This is a pair one Euclidean distance. It's a, uh, Oh, in big O notation is, uh, is, a, is a quadratic uh, time complexity. So uh, it's known to not scale so well. But... So we're out of time. There are some okay. additional questions um, on Discord. So if you uh, head over to the talk channel. Maybe I will head there. Those. Okay. Um, and again, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.